Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. On various occasions, the Bible references lesser-known figures who played a significant role in the biblical narrative. Naaman is an example that fits this description. Many Bible readers may not have even come across his name, and if they have encountered any mention of him in a biblical verse, it's likely that the memory has faded. Today, we will delve into Naaman, a figure of utmost importance in the sacred scriptures of the Old Testament of the Bible. She stands out as an Ammonite princess, being the daughter of Hanan, the monarch of the Ammonites. Naaman's narrative is documented in the first book of Kings, in verses 21 and 31. The biblical account states that Naaman married Solomon, the legendary king of Israel, renowned for his wisdom and opulence. While Naaman's life remains shrouded in mystery, we have managed to extract crucial information from both the Bible and Jewish tradition to present all the details in this video. For this reason, we believe our channel deserves your subscription and appreciation, expressed through that like, contributing to the dissemination of our work. Naamah, Wife of King Solomon, The Untold Story The name Naamah carries the meaning of pleasant or pleasurable. Interestingly, among all of Solomon's wives, Naamah is the only one whose name is recorded in the Bible. This inclusion is evidently associated with her position as queen mother, but even so, it remains an intriguing fact. Given the vastness of Solomon's harem, composed of hundreds of women, Naamah being mentioned in the scriptures stands out even more. As the daughter of a king, Naamah grew up in an environment of luxury and privilege. Her marriage to Solomon, one of the most powerful and influential monarchs in the history of Israel, was undoubtedly an event of great political and diplomatic significance. Naamah's connection to the Ammonites carried serious implications due to the historical hostility between Israelites and Ammonites. The Ammonites were an ancient Semitic people inhabiting the region of present-day Jordan and adjacent parts of Syria and Saudi Arabia. They are mentioned in various passages of the Bible and have a rich and complex history in antiquity. The Ammonites are considered descendants of Ben-Ami, who, according to the Bible, was the son of Lot and the grandson of Abraham. The name Ammon is often associated with Ben-Ami, meaning, son of my people, in Hebrew. According to biblical tradition, the Ammonites were often considered enemies of the Israelites, as they descended from Lot, Abraham's nephew, and shared a history of rivalry and conflict with the people of Israel. Therefore, Solomon's marriage to Naamah, an Ammonite princess, raised concerns and criticism from more conservative Israelites. They feared that this union could compromise the purity of Israelite faith and culture. Before this marriage, it is crucial to recall that Solomon had already been married to the daughter of a pharaoh, a union considered legitimate in the context of royal marriages. However, Solomon soon became enchanted by various foreign women from different cultures, including Naamah. The central problem in this situation was his lack of restraint, as throughout his life, he accumulated an impressive number of wives and concubines. In the first book of Kings, chapter 11, verse 3, it is recorded that he had 700 wives of royal lineage and 300 concubines. Even after receiving various pieces of advice, including from his own mother, warning about the dangers these diverse women could pose, Solomon seemed not to give due importance and continued involving himself with women from various nations, such as Ammonites, Moabites, Edomites, and Hittites, who practiced different religions with foreign gods. However, Solomon was deeply in love with Naamah. This marriage became even more complex and impactful in his life, as Solomon's love for Naamah transcended the cultural and political barriers of the time. This intense affection led him to make decisions with negative consequences not only for himself but also for the kingdom of Israel. Solomon's passion for Naamah led him to allow the practice of worshipping foreign gods, following the customs of his beloved wife, thereby compromising the fundamental religious principles of Judaism. The story of Solomon vividly illustrates how a king who initially worshipped the one true God can deviate over time. The Bible tells us that, although Solomon began his reign worshipping the Lord God, 
he eventually succumbed to the influences of his foreign wives, including Naamah, and built altars for their gods. It is crucial to note that Solomon was not the first king to break this rule, his father, King David, also had multiple wives, indicating a pattern. In fact, the Bible, in Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 17, explicitly warned that the kings of Israel should not have many wives, as this would lead them to spiritual deviation. Surprisingly, even as a man so wise in many aspects, Solomon did not follow the advice of the scriptures and strayed from the right path, succumbing to temptations. It is worth highlighting how well-known Solomon was for his wisdom and sagacity. One of the most well-known stories illustrating his intelligence involves two women claiming to be the mothers of a specific baby. Solomon proposed a compromise, to divide the baby in half, an idea that distressed one of the women, leading her to despair and pleading with the king not to do it. In this way, Solomon discerned the true mother of the baby. Solomon's wisdom also extended to a wide range of knowledge, from understanding nature to composing proverbs and songs, recorded in the Old Testament in the books of Proverbs and the Song of Solomon. While Solomon was still alive, a prophet named Ahijah had a vision and proclaimed a prophecy that would change the course of Israel's history. Ahijah's prophecy revealed that Jeroboam, a servant of Solomon, would become the king of ten of the tribes of Israel, while only one tribe would remain under the rule of Solomon and his descendants. This prediction by Ahijah indicated that the unity of the kingdom of Israel was about to be divided. Upon learning of the prophecy, Solomon realized that Jeroboam posed a threat to the continuity of his reign. Fearing the loss of his power and influence, Solomon took drastic action and attempted to assassinate Jeroboam. This desperate act revealed the growing tension in the kingdom of Israel. Jeroboam fled to Egypt to escape Solomon's persecution. However, after Solomon's death, he returned to Israel. The northern tribes, discontented with the oppression and heavy taxes under Solomon's reign, chose Jeroboam as their leader. Jeroboam I became the first king of the northern kingdom, also known as Israel, following the division of the United Kingdom of Israel into Israel, to the north, and Judah, to the south. He reigned for about 22 years, c. 931 to 910 BC. After Solomon's death and the ascension of his son Rehoboam to the throne, Jeroboam reappeared as a central figure in the conflicts that followed. The fulfillment of Ahijah's prophecy triggered a series of events that led to the division of the Kingdom of Israel into two, the Kingdom of Israel, led by Jeroboam and consisting of the ten northern tribes, and the Kingdom of Judah, led by Rehoboam and consisting of the southern tribes. This division marked a tumultuous period in Israel's history known as the Schism, with lasting political and religious repercussions. Rehoboam's reign and his disastrous administration represented a critical turning point in Israel's history. The increase in taxes and Rehoboam's unfortunate decision to ignore the concerns of the people quickly weakened his authority, leading to a period of decline in his reign. The economy weakened, political stability was threatened, and popular dissatisfaction persisted. Finally, Jeroboam became the first king of the Kingdom of Israel after the division of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Jeroboam took drastic measures to prevent his people from continuing to worship in Jerusalem. To maintain religious control, he made two golden calf statues and placed them on altars in Bethel and Dan, encouraging the Israelites to worship these images instead of going to Jerusalem. This controversial decision had far-reaching consequences, as the golden calf became a symbol of apostasy and idolatry in the history of Israel. One day, while Jeroboam was offering sacrifices at one of these altars, an unknown prophet emerged and predicted that a descendant of David would one day destroy the pagan altars and even burn human bones on them. Surprisingly, this prophecy was fulfilled centuries later when King Josiah of Judah implemented religious reforms and carried out the actions foretold by the unknown prophet. Naaman's story reminds us that even the wisest and most powerful leaders can be led into sin and apostasy when they allow external influences, such as political marriages and alliances, to corrupt their devotion to the true God. 
Solomon's decision to build altars for the foreign gods of his wives, under the influence of Naaman, ushered in a period of spiritual decline and political conflicts that culminated in the division of the Kingdom of Israel. The story of Naaman and her influence on Solomon is a vivid reminder of how wisdom and faith can be tested even in moments of great power and success. Therefore, it is a narrative that urges us to consider the influences shaping our own lives and the importance of steadfastly holding on to our principles, even in the face of external temptations and pressures. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. And if you want us to continue bringing more videos in this format of biblical stories, leave a like so we know you're enjoying it. Thank you for watching so far. God bless. See you soon.